Okay, everyone. Welcome to today's Ask Me Sky Skills webinar on new employee orientation, building our union on day one. Your presenter for this session is Michael Dillon. My name is Sean Dale Day and I'm with the Education Department at AFSME International and I will be your host for today's session. Before we begin, I would like to go over a few housekeeping notes. We encourage you to use your telephone in order to participate in the Q&A at the end of this session. Please select Use Telephone after joining the webinar and call in using the numbers provided once you sign on. Be sure to use the audio pin shown after joining the webinar. All the participant lines will be muted throughout the presentation. Lines will be opened up for a quick Q&A at the end of today's session. If you have questions along the way, please enter them using the chat feature or place them into the question queue. We will try to answer your questions as we go. Please take the survey at the exit of this webinar to receive your certificate of participation. You will be sent a certificate by the end of the week. Please be reminded that this session will be recorded. Thank you all, and now I will turn the session over to Mike. Hello, everyone. Welcome to New Employee Orientation Webinar, Building Our Union on Day One. Uh, I'd like to Welcome you all here. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Mike Dillon. I'm a field education coordinator in the central region for Ask Me International. Uh, new employee orientation is really a vital part of reaching out and building long-lasting relationships with our sisters and brothers. In fact, I still remember my very first uh, union new employee orientation. It was my first day working at Meyer in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and it included a 30-minute NEO session with the local leadership. Now, as a 14-year-old entering the workforce, I felt reassured knowing if I faced any issues at work, there was someone there doing the same work I was doing who I could speak with confidentially. Uh, the management team during orientation spoke about the various rules, regulations, and policies while the union leadership uh, discussed workplace protection, wages, benefits, and who to speak with should workplace issues arise. And once the union leadership concluded its presentation, they asked us to sign a membership card, and I immediately signed my membership card. And 24 years later, I'm still working in a represented position and advocating for workplace social and economic justice for all. Formal NEOs, such as the one I attended at Meyer, uh, can be brief, but the impact on someone can last a lifetime. So new employee orientations, building our union on day one, uh, today's webinar. As a result of this webinar, you will be able to take away some vitally important do's and don'ts. You will have a toolkit of ideas and a clear message for new employee orientations and you'll also be ready to deliver NEOs in your workplace. You know, when we welcome new sisters and brothers to our workplaces, we must educate them about what it means to be union. Wages, benefits, and working conditions are the inheritance of past labor struggles. And to maintain those achievements and build on them, new workers must also become active in the struggle. So again, in this webinar, we will identify some do's and don'ts for NEOs from formal orientation sessions, steward outreach, to ongoing education. You will come away with new tools and have the ability to talk with your coworkers about our union. Reaching out to new employees, there are really a couple of ways to reach out to new employees uh, for new employee orientation. The first one is through contractual language. Um, NEOs which are on employer time. And this language is acquired through negotiations between the union and the employer. Uh, later in this webinar, we'll discuss uh, how to acquire sample contractual language that you can negotiate if you don't already have it in your contracts. <clears throat> the next slide, we'll go over uh, the sample NEO contractual language. Uh, 
what you see on your screen is but one example of roughly eight that we have in the handout available for you to download at the conclusion of today's webinar. As you can see, it states, the union shall have the right and opportunity to hold an orientation session with all newly hired employees. This orientation session shall be for the purpose of explaining the new employee's contractual rights and introducing him or her to the union. The orientation will be held within 28 days of the employee's hire date and shall be during working hours at a time agreed by the employee's immediate supervisor not to exceed one hour in duration. Again, if your contract does not have formal NEO language in it, there is no better time than now to place it on your list of contract proposals for your next round of negotiations. And again, you'll have the opportunity to download uh, some sample NEO contractual language at the end of this webinar. Another method to reach out to new employees is through one-on-one -on -one conversations in the workplace. And whether or not your local or chapter has negotiated language for formal NEOs, one-on-one -on -one conversations with new employees must take place in either case. Is there a foolproof way to have contact with every single new employee in your local? Well, there isn't exactly a foolproof or a one-size-fits-all method to have contact with every new employee in your local. However, there are some do's and don'ts that should be followed in your local's NEO program to ensure every new employee in your local is contacted. You know, we need to take a second and learn from our own experiences with NEO to up our game. Something that really resonates with new employees is when they hear stories from old timers about all that the union has accomplished and the current fights the union is taking on. Formal NEOs, those that are negotiated into a contract, and a systematic workplace one-on-one -on -one communication plan to conduct informal but crucial one-on-one -on -one NEOs at the work site is vital to, build, to building a very strong and long-lasting local union and council and international. We know from experience that when new employees are welcomed by friendly union coworkers and personally asked, to join the union by someone at work, the likelihood of their joining and then becoming active, it goes up dramatically. Let's move on to some NEO dues. Of course, uh, we definitely want to welcome new employees on day one. Additionally, we want to negotiate formal new employee orientation on the employer's time. This shows our union has a legitimate place in the workplace and is an equal partner with the employer. Uh, formal NEOs and welcoming new employees on day one allows us to sign them up on their first day of employment. We also have to realize that new employer member, member orientation is a process. It's not a single event or a mailing or a tweet or a Facebook post. It, it's an ongoing process. While formal NEOs are very important, they are actually no substitute for multiple one-on-one -on -one conversations with new employees and new members. Having multiple one-on-one -on -one conversations builds strong union relationships that last a very, very long time. In fact, many of us on this webinar have likely participated in Ask Me Strong activists or coaches training. Um, in that training, we learn the importance and need for having good one-on-one -on -one conversations with members and non-members and fee payers. The skills that we learned in how to have an effective one-on-one -on -one conversation, we can implement those skills in our NEO program. If you have not participated in the Ask Me Strong program, there will be a link at the end of this webinar that you can click on and check out the Ask Me Strong website. We do want to give workers a new employee orientation packet, but we want to provide it to them only after they sign their membership card. If you provide them the packet prior to signing the card, they often say they'll look over the literature and get back with you. When we hear, uh, let me look this over and I'll get back with you, we know from experience that this rarely happens. That's why it's important to have them sign the membership card prior to giving them uh, the NEO packet. 
it doesn't mean that you don't want to explain the contents of the packet. It just means you don't want to provide them the packet prior to signing the card. Additionally, we want to distribute those new employee packets with a reasonable, but not an overwhelming amount of information uh, at the first meeting or during the one-on-one -on -one conversation. But again, only distribute it after the new employee signs their membership card. Uh, you can find suggested items to include in your NEO packets in Appendix B of the Ask Me Steward Handbook. Uh, that will be available for download as well at the conclusion of this webinar. We do want to ask new hires to sign membership cards and people MVP cards on their first day of work. Um, employees sign a number of forms on their first day on the job. And by greeting new employees on their first day, joining our union will be as natural to them as joining the workforce. Additionally, just like most of us uh, on this webinar were asked by someone to join and become active in our union, we must ask new employees to join and become active too. In fact, many fee payers believe they are full members because they are paying something and on their pay stub it shows union dues and money coming out of their check. But only after a one-on-one -on -one conversation with an activist or a leader do they realize they are not full members. Why are they not full members? Well, it's quite simple. Many fee payers say they were never asked to sign a membership card. This is why it is imperative we ask new employees to sign a membership card and a People MVP card on day one. If you've been through Ask Me Strong um, coaches or activist training, you'll see a familiar word right here, inoculate. Inoculate means we want to let people know what, what challenges may be facing us in the future. Uh, we want to let them know what's coming. So that way they don't feel blindsided when something happens. So we do want to inoculate against future attacks, employer anti-union tactics, uh, anti-union groups who are getting into states everywhere and encouraging members to opt out of their union. And we also want to let them know about angry members in the workplace who dislike their union for one reason or another. It is up to us to show new employees what our union is really about. Additionally, we should have stewards, MAP members, or activists welcome new hires and conduct one-on-one -on -one conversations with them in their work area. Each new hire should be spoken to individually on their first day. The steward should meet with the new employee within their first week of employment. And each new employee should receive a one-on-one -on -one conversation or a phone call with an officer or board member of the local in their first month of employment. With some do's, there's always some don'ts. And a big don't is don't let employer representatives hand out membership cards, people MVP cards, and contracts as part of the hiring process. That's our responsibility. Stewards, MAP members, and activists should take this responsibility to build relationships and build the local and council. Uh, there should be no employer participation with our business. During a formal NEO or a one-on-one -on -one NEO conversation, we shouldn't take that time to be overly critical of the employer. Uh, these folks have come in and they're looking forward to a job. That's why they're working there. So instead of uh, criticizing the employer, we should take the opportunity to highlight accomplishments our union and the employer have made together and let them know without a strong union, the employer wouldn't be able to do what it does because the union provides the employer with a good, steady, responsible workforce. And again, this provides us an opportunity to sign these members up, these new employees up on day one. We should also not wait until after a new hire's probation ends before signing them up as, as members. If we wait several months, we allow others to define our union and it becomes less likely the new employee or employees will join us. 
Probationary employees are covered by a number of Union 1 benefits, such as the wages they receive, overtime compensation, non-discrimination clauses, pension, health insurance, seniority, and many others. They should be part of our union from the start. The employer does not wait months to, to have uh, new employees sign off on policy and procedures manuals. Um, they do it on day one. This is why we should take that opportunity to orient new employees immediately and sign them up on their first day of work. Let's move on to a quick question. Uh, new employees should be provided information, select one of the following, when the new employee orientation session begins, after the new employee orientation session begins, during the NEO session, or after they have signed a membership card? Take a second and select the best answer. Great, everyone got that correct. Absolutely. We should provide uh, the NEO packet only after they have signed a membership card. With the next question, it's a true or false, 50-50 uh, uh, possibility of getting right or wrong. If a new employee signs a membership card, no follow-up one-on-one conversation is necessary. True or false? Great, everyone got it right. Uh, the answer is false. Follow-up one-on-one conversations are vital uh, to building a strong local union. It also allows the local leaders, the activists, to find out what's going on in the work, workplace and be really honed in on all of the members and listening to them and their concerns and finding out what motivates them too. This is how we develop leaders and activists. As we move forward with this webinar, we're now going to discuss three steps for a successful NEO program. The first one, plan your program. The second one, prepare your program. And finally, we have to execute our program. So how do we go about doing this? Well, first we need to develop a plan that ensures success. Take an opportunity to discuss with your executive board a plan for new employee orientations. Assign one person as the lead for your NEO program. Uh, you can create a new employee orientation committee and have a chair of that committee. Should also assign and train presenters for group NEOs or one-on-one -on -one conversations for NEOs, and obtain lists of employees from the employer. Uh, quite often when new employee orientation is negotiated into a contract, uh, you can have this requirement um, by the employer for lists of new employees on a weekly basis, bi-weekly, monthly, however often that they hire new employees. Uh, we should designate someone in we each work area to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with each new employee the first day of work and ask the new employee to join our union as a full member and as an MVP of our people program. Take the opportunity to train stewards and MAP members to be able to conduct effective one-on-one -on -one conversations. A new employee orientation program is a great way to keep uh, the MAT team operational during times when things are quiet in the workplace. However, with the continuing assaults from all over, very rarely do we have a quiet time in the workplace. <clears throat> As we move on to preparing new employee packets, uh, the employee packet should have information in it, but not an overwhelming amount of information. Uh, a simple information sheet about your local union with the following information on it. A list of the officers, stewards, and MAP members with contact information and pictures. That way you put a face with the name. And you put a face with the local leadership, and they know who to go to. Additionally, there should be a date, place, and time of the local's monthly meeting. Uh, provide a brief description of the local and highlights of recent victories and your accomplishments. 
You should have a local contract if you're covered by a contract. Have a local or council newsletter. This allows the new employee to see what goes on outside of the workplace or things that have taken place in the workplace that they may not be aware of. Um, you should also have an Ask Me Advantage brochure that highlights members only benefits. Membership authorization cards and people MVP sign up cards should be in the possession of the local leader handling the NEO session or the one-on-one -on -one conversation. Uh, we'll discuss in a second when to provide the cards to the new employees. Remember, give the new employee uh, the NEO packet only after you have signed up the new employee. What you see on your screen right now is a sample agenda. This agenda can be used for formal uh, NEOs or one-on-one -on -one NEOs. Does this sample agenda look familiar to anyone? If you've completed the Ask Me Strong training, I'm sure you recognize this agenda is very similar to the five steps of an effective organizing one-on-one -on -one conversation. Uh, as you can see, step one should introduce yourself and welcome the new employees to the workplace. If it's a group discussion or even a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the new employee, ask questions to get to know the new employee and to develop a relationship. Some examples of questions to ask. Have they ever had a job like this before? What are they looking forward to? Is there anything they're worried about? And a great question, have they ever been a union member? And if they have, what was their experience? Find out what, what it is that, that motivates them or what they want out of this relationship. Once you've done that, share your message about your union and inoculate them against future attacks or what's coming down the pike. Share with them accomplishments of your local union, things you have won or attacks you have fought. Uh, the importance of every worker participating in their union and being active in order to protect and improve our jobs, working standards, and the services we provide our communities should also be stressed to them. Once you've accomplished the first three steps, now you should distribute membership cards and ask the new employees to sign and become a member of their union. After they've signed, discuss with the new employees how politics affects our jobs and why it's important we have a voice in the political process. Many folks don't like to be part of the political process, but we need to stress to them, without a voice in the political process, our concerns go unheard. After you've done this, you should then distribute People MVP cards to the new employees and ask them to become a People MVP member so we do have a voice. Again, once they've signed a membership card, now you can provide them the NEO packet. Quiz time again. True or false? An agenda should be used for only formal NEOs. Great, everyone got it right. It's false. An agenda should be used for formal NEOs, and it should be used for one-on-one -on -one conversations, one-on-one -on -one NEOs. That way, everyone in the local who is handling new employee orientations, whether it be formal or one-on-one -on -one conversations, is, is communicating the same message to all new employees. Next question. A new employee packet should include a contact list for human resources, a list of all local and state legislators, a local or council newsletter, or all workplace policies and procedures. Take a second and select the best answer. Uh, most of you got it right. It should include a local or council newsletter. All workplace policies and procedures, yeah, it's great uh, that the employees know what the workplace policies and procedures are, but that is something the employer and management of the employer will provide to new employees. That's their responsibility. As we move forward with, the, with your NEO program, understand that formal NEOs are very important, and we must take full advantage of them where we have negotiated them. If we don't use the language that we have acquired through negotiations, we are simply giving away our power. 
we should also send our most compelling local leaders to conduct them so we don't waste an opportunity to make a great first impression. Workplace one-on-one -on -one NEOs are arguably even more effective than formal NEOs. Whether you have a formal NEO process in your contract or not, every local needs to develop a system to ensure that every new employee gets a one-on-one -on -one NEO from a union activist on their first day of work and follow-up conversations with those employees must be had after that. To do this, you will need to get your executive board on program, put someone in charge of the process, and recruit MAP members, stewards, activists, and other local leaders to complete this task. You can have a highly successful NEO program in a local of any size. In fact, I'll tell you a, a quick story about a local I had while I was a staff rep in Illinois. It was a conglomerate local. It was comprised of three facilities, three very large facilities, and various agency offices spread over two counties. Um, each of the three large facilities had multiple buildings. Some had as many as 10 or 12 buildings. And what we did with our NEO program there is we sat down. I, I helped with uh, the executive board. Uh, one steward was responsible for NEOs at each of the larger three facilities, and there was a steward responsible at every agency office. An activist was assigned in each building in every agency office for follow-up or one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, they did have a formal NEO practice in the contract, however, not um, during every NEO. Uh, with the employer, a steward or an activist wasn't always available. So we utilized the assigned activists uh, to have follow-up or one-on-one -on -one conversation NEOs in each building, in each agency office. And I can tell you there were over 800 uh, individuals employed in this local in all of the facilities and offices. And there were only 16 fee payers in the local. That was approximately 98% full membership in this local, and it was spread all over the place. So whether your local is confined to one little office space or spread all over six, seven, eight counties, you can sit down, plan, prepare, and execute a, an, an awesome NEO process. Remember, plan, prepare, and execute. What you see on your screen right now are resources used for this webinar. Again, if you haven't been uh, to an Ask Me Strong coaches or activist training, the link is right there for the Ask Me Strong website. Uh, resources available for you to download are the new employee orientation, do's and don'ts, three steps for successful new employee orientation programs, a worksheet that will help you develop your message for new employee orientation, uh, a sample contractual language uh, handout. I believe it has eight, uh, eight samples of contractual language that's been gained across the country. You'll also have an opportunity to download handling common questions and overcoming objections. And the last one is activating our coworkers. You can download that handout as well. With that, are there any questions or comments? At this time, we will open up the phone line, so please just raise your hands and I'll unmute your phone line. Eddie, I'm going to unmute your phone line. Hello? Hi, Betty. Hi, how are you? Good. Ask your question. Hey. My question is, I had uh, some new members about two, almost three months ago that came into employment, and I went and I did a new members orientation with them and welcomed them in, and uh, had the card signed initially. And upon having the card signed, uh, the employer uh, found reason and grounds to let the employee, employee be dismissed on her 89th day rather than, of course, 90 days with the probation. 
And at that time, I felt bad that I couldn't do anything for her. So that kind of like ties the hand for the for the uh, leader, as well as what would have been my avenue to try to console her. I mean, I, I, I explained it to try to stay under the radar, but what more could I have done? Hi, Betty. Thanks for your question. Uh, do you mean what more could you have done to prevent the employee from being terminated? Yes. Uh, once an employee is hired, they have to abide by you know, the workplace rules, regulations, and policies. The only thing yes. we can do is tell them what they shouldn't do and what protections they have in place should they make a mistake. Um, everyone knows that they are typically on probation for a period of time once their employment begins. And having periodic one-on-one -on -one conversations with these employees to find out where their shortcomings are or what they may need help with can help them uh, make it through probation. But as far as being terminated during the probationary period, again, that, that would be determined by your contract, but the appropriate uh, avenue of, uh, of your response would be. But typically, okay. once they're terminated, they don't have access to the grievance procedure during the probationary period. Okay. Well, that's how I handle it. And I just want to hear a rebound because I did, you know, I give information and ask them, you know, as well as uh, in, in that information, ask them to, you know, be, you know, careful, stay on the radar because until you make your 91st day, you know, there's nothing that the union can virtually do uh, uh, for, for termination. But it's just the fact that it saddens you when you get to that point. And, of course, there were some downfalls on the employee employees you know, side, sure. but it's just that I wanted to hear if I had did the correct thing and, and from what you told me I did. Absolutely. We can only set employees up for success and it's incumbent upon them to adhere to the path and become successful. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? If you can just click on the hand icon next to your name, I'll unmute your mic. Edmundo? Yes, this is Edmundo from Central Valley in California. Um, my question is, when you when you keep saying employers, are you meaning employers of ASME or like, um, uh, yeah, employers from ASME or like? Uh, well, the employer would be the organization, the group, the state, the county, uh, the municipality or the private sector uh, corporation that has hired the employee. Those are the employers. Okay. I see. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ingrid? Um, good afternoon. This is Ingrid Bella from Santa Clara Valley Water District, House 57 Local 101. Um, I wanted to know, is this um, webinar that you're doing, I think it's, it's very useful. I didn't get notice to it till today, and, and it was perfect timing, so I was able to get on. Are you recording it so that I could share the link with others? Yes, this session is uh, being recorded, and once we are done tomorrow, we have two sessions tomorrow at noon and 4 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. And once all sessions have uh, been completed, then we will go through and put it together, make sure it's great, and send out a link and post it. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Betty, do you have another? Hello? Yes, Betty. Yeah, yeah, yes. My other question was, I heard that it was said to, uh, in the packet to include a contract. Uh, one of the, the union contracts to the new employees. But say, for instance, uh, as I was just explaining about on doing probationary period, if they're not uh, making their probationary period, how would that affect the, uh, the contract um, as far as keeping the nominal amount for newcomers for the future? Because if they end up getting terminated, 
do we ask for the contract back or let them keep it? If you've provided it to them, you can ask for it back, but if you've given it to them, I would consider it theirs. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, Mike, there's a question in the queue, or more, uh, I believe more of a comment. Um, Dan Hamilton wants you to speak about um, the tension between inoculation and pro-union messaging. Um, they seem like opposite ideas. Oh, discuss uh, inoculation and pro-union? Yes. Well, we have the opportunity to speak highly about our locals and our councils and international union during the entire process of new employee orientation. Uh, once we share our vision and our message with these employees, we need to let them know that there are entities out there who do not believe the same things we believe. And we need to let them know exactly what these groups want to do and what they are telling folks. We can tell them that in Washington, for instance, they have groups going around uh, talking about opting out today. In Michigan, these same groups are going after the big three and telling folks how to get out of the union, they, that they can opt out. But we need to be upfront and tell them that these things are out there so they don't act surprised and they aren't surprised and shocked when they see that these groups are infiltrating states all across this country trying to destroy our way of living. And, you know, you can piggyback on those, um, those groups and what they advocate for by saying this is why we do what we do. So we can continue our way of life and continue to provide vital services to the communities that, that we serve. We have a question from Carmen Rivera, president of DC 1707, Local 107. Uh, she wants to know what steps can she take to further motivate her membership, especially with all the negative outlets out there? Motivation. Well, motivation is sort of individualistic. Uh, everyone has something that motivates them. Um, it's finding out what it is by talking to them, having one-on-one -on -one conversations. But the big thing is what motivates me is when I look back through history, I see that uh, unions sprang from no unions, and it took groups of people. It didn't matter if they were black, white, Latino, uh, male, female. They were from all over the country, and they all came together and advocated for and fought for the same things, workplace, economic, and social justice. They overcame great odds and obstacles without unions. Now we have a union. And just think what we can do if we all came together and pushed forward and struck out for the same goals. We can fight back, and we can win these challenges but it takes all of us. One person can't sit back and wait for someone else to do it for them. We have to do it together. Okay, there's another question in the queue. Uh, Melissa Speed asks, um, if you could discuss right-to-work states versus fee-payer states and how to address at NEO. Well, right to work states, uh, you are either a member or you're not. Uh, states that have fair share or fee payers, you are a member or you pay a portion of your dues, which are for administrative costs, the cost of administering the contract, uh, grievances, negotiations, things like that. Uh, typically, the fair share fee is 
it depends on where you're at, but it's usually between 80 and all the way up to 100% of what a full membership fee is. Right to work, it's all or nothing. But one thing that we must advocate to the folks who don't want to belong to the union, who aren't in the union in right to work states, is we should highlight some gains that we've been able to make in right to work states, but ask them, imagine what we can do if we had 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 more sisters and brothers on the front lines with us moving this forward. Imagine what we are capable of achieving. And the same goes, holds true in, uh, right in fair share uh, states. You know, membership percentages are looked at by management, any management, when you go into negotiations. And whether it's right to work or a state with fair share, the higher the percentage of members in the union, it shows management that there are more members standing with their union than against it. And folks who are fee payers or who aren't in the union, like in right to work states, they may not be against the union, but to management, that tells them that they are. So we need folks to stand up and stand together because we can accomplish anything if we all stand together. That 1% raise could turn into a 3.5% raise. Okay, I just want to mention to everyone, um, if you do have questions, please raise your hands. But as Mike had mentioned earlier, there are handouts that are available for download. Um, you can download those handouts now by just clicking on the handouts tab and downloading those items. Um, I only see one more question in the queue, and we're going to take this. This is from Edmundo. I'm unmuting your mic. Ask your question. Hi. Uh, hi. This is probably repetitive towards what you just said, but um, the panel arguments that you were providing for um, right to work states, are they also applicable to, the, to folks who are aware about the Harris versus Quinn case? Uh, the Harris versus Quinn case or the Friedrichs case? The Harris versus Quinn. For home health care workers? Yes. That's, that's my um, UDW okay. asking local 3930. Absolutely. Uh, those arguments can be used in any situation uh, where there's uh, right to work or a state where fair share is, is compulsory. Okay. You just need to let them know the higher the percentage of full members, the more exactly. strength we have at the table. Exactly. Okay. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Okay. Seeing that there are no more questions, we're going to move on, which I believe is um, now the end of our webinar. So at this time, I want to thank everyone for participating in this webinar on new employee orientation. Please remember to complete the exit survey at the end of this webinar to receive your certificate of participation. Um, Mike, I want to thank you for this very informative webinar on how we should be engaging new members. Um, thank you. I had a, had a great time and great questions and comments. And thanks, everyone, for your participation. This was a very, uh, very, very good webinar. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening.